This time the Quabbin NJROTC will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Chaplain Brian Stitson. Good evening. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you for this opportunity to gather in the spirit of our chosen profession and its mission to protect and serve. We thank you for the opportunity tonight to acknowledge and recognize the outstanding contributions that the Barry Law Enforcement Professionals have made to their community this past year. It has been said that there are two opposing forces at work in this world of ours today, order and chaos. We thank you, God, for the presence of these professionals when there is a need to restore order to the inevitable chaos that has a constant presence in this imperfect world as we all witnessed this past Monday right here on these very grounds. We also give thanks for the blessings this department and its members have received, for its leaders, for its officers, and for all those involved in keeping this community safe, but most of all, for its spirit, because it is the spirit of the Barry Police Department that gives it its strength, its professionalism, and its purpose. Amen. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for our first annual awards ceremony. This time I'd like to call forward Town Administrator Andrew Golis to say a few words. Chief Carbone asked if I would say a few words. The first thing I think of, do you really want a firefighter saying a few words at a police department, a police officer ceremony? But uh, in all reality, my nine years of uh, experience in the public safety field has taught me one valuable lesson. Whether you're wearing bunker gear or a bulletproof vest, you're not the only one who's making a sacrifice to your community. Your family is just as much a part of the service as you are. When you took this job, they took it with you. And Make sure that when you go home tonight, that you thank them for their dedication and service that allows you to do your job every day. You guys have an extremely difficult job. You're tasked with dealing with people on the worst day of their lives. Our community looks to you guys to protect us when there's no one else to turn to. When, there, when there's a cry for help, you're the first ones to answer that call. But despite these challenges, this job is a rewarding career and can be more rewarding than imaginable. Congratulations to each one of the officers that are receiving an award tonight and civilians. And I'm proud and tremendous, I'm proud of the tremendous service that our police department provides to this town. I wish to thank you all for all you do to go above and beyond the call of duty. Thank you. Next I'd like to call forward Selectman Greg O'Sullivan. Selectman Charles Chase. Thank you. Um, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to be here to recognize our police department and law enforcement. Uh, and I have said this on several occasions that uh, I am very, very proud to be associated with a force of this caliber 
and these fine individuals. We are indeed grateful to their service. They go above and beyond the call many, many times. And uh, for that, we are grateful. And I think one other thing that when we come, one other aspect of all of this, when we come to a ceremony such as this for public safety people in general, is that we forget that there are people back home that are giving up a lot. It's a stressful, these are stressful position, and these are positions, excuse me, and these are very stressful times in which we live. And I think that going back home to, to your family, your loved ones, your partners, uh, probably is very difficult sometimes, I would guess. I've never been in law enforcement or public safety, but uh, I would think it would be, it's very stressful. I have seen reports and so on of what they get involved with. And I just want to say once again, I am very, very proud to be associated and have this force working for our town on behalf of all of our citizens. Uh, we are indeed honored and privileged to have you gentlemen with us. So, uh, and I have to add one little note. I noticed, uh, a traffic potential traffic detail up the road coming in uh, and the highway department was doing their own flagging and uh, somehow it wasn't quite the same so uh, we miss you in that regard also so uh, but once again uh, thank you for the invitation and I'm very happy to be here tonight so uh, thank you Sawyer has been a part-time officer for the past year and a half. He has proven himself a valuable member of the Barry Police family, and he's displayed reliability, discipline, accountability, and determination. In keeping with our desire to hire full-time officers from within, we are proud to promote Officer Sawyer to full-time police officer. I'd like to now to call forward Ellen Glidden, our town clerk, who will swear Officer Sawyer in as a full-time police officer. Sawyer's mother is Susan Sawyer, who will pin Officer Sawyer's new number board.
Staff Sergeant Brown. Post. In October of 2017, Staff Sergeant Brown was awarded the MAD Award, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. This award honors those officers that show a dedication and commitment to removing drunk and drug-impaired drivers from the roadways. Staff Sergeant Brown's excellence in OUI enforcement and his activities as a drug recognition expert were recognized by MAD in Massachusetts. Staff Sergeant Brown is being awarded a ribbon that will be worn on his Class A uniform to recognize having been awarded this prestigious honor. Congratulations, Staff Sergeant Brown. At this time, I'd like to call up Superintendent Dr. Maureen Marshall, who will speak about the Command Level Education Award. certainly won't spend a lot of time telling you how very fortunate we are to have all of these individuals working and learning alongside of us. I can only tell you that the children who attend the schools within our Quad Regional School District are better for their efforts and are safer for their efforts. I will tell you there are times on Sunday night when we have to call the dispatcher and give them some really crazy story about the help we might need. And I don't have to be at my office more than about five minutes. And two of our finest are there to help and assist us in any way possible. We know also that we can count on them when we have a serious injury at school. And we need to call for help and reinforcements. We are always, always privileged to have the finest attend, attend to our needs. I would just like to say also that as a school district, we are very very, we find very important the need to always be lifelong learners. To know that the world changes very rapidly. And we have to be prepared to meet those new changes. And it is really amazing to me that our police department also believes in lifelong learning. They believe that their job changes from day to day and that there are new stresses and strains on what they have to do and new responsibilities that they will have to, to shoulder. Chief Carbone and others have said, we will put a chief, uh, a, a school resource officer in your midst who will help keep our schools safe, keep our children safe, and also provide a level of instruction for our students how to work better and learn better in a very complicated society. It was amazing to me that Chief Carbone and, his, and those members of his staff participated with us in our active shooter drills, and also in a program called ALICE training. We didn't have to look far, and our, our, our officers were there, and also working with our administrators to ensure that we would have the absolute best protection we could possibly ask for. One thing that is amazing to me is the relationship that the school district has with the Barry Police Department. I know that sometimes the town of Barry says it is such a burden to have this school in its midst. The police, the fire, and others are really, they have us as their responsibility. And we have children from five different communities. Actually, with school choice, we have children from 26 different cities and towns who attend school within the town of Barry. We never have to look far to know that our police are there to help and assist any time. Never have I heard a complaint that, oh, we have to be at the high school. Isn't it too bad that the high school is an hour town? Never do we hear that. The thing, again, that is really important and impressive to me is to see our officers this evening receiving awards, not only to, to become full-time, but also the SAD award, which is such an important thing about drunk driving 
with our students and also obviously with adults in our community. It was amazing to me when Chief Carbone led, you know, let me know that even our leadership in the police department feel the need to continue to learn. And two of our individuals within the department have attended the Command Officers Development Training Course. That is a 400 hour training course. It is something that takes a great deal of time and provides our leadership in the community that's working with our police force the opportunity to learn all that is important in the new and changing world of law enforcement. So we do not have people in our department who look to the past to understand the future, but instead we have a police department that is chasing the future and providing for us a 21st century police department that understands the school's needs, which are new and different and changing as we move into this future, but also a police department that recognizes what we as educators know well, that to be prepared, one must be a lifelong learner. Because what we learned that was appropriate in 1999 or the year 2000 no longer meets our needs. I commend those within our police department who continue to work and learn together, and I thank them for what they have done in a continuous basis for our schools and specifically for our school children. You support the families who are in need. You provide a better environment for the children in which they can learn and in which they can grow and mature in our community. I thank you for that. And the awards this evening go to the to the officers who provide the leadership in the department in Barry. And that would be Deputy Chief Saborn and Chief Carbon. Congratulations. I would like to recognize a couple of civilians that we are awarding tonight. On January 30th, 2018, as most of the uh, made world news, so most people know about it, an armed robber entered Northeast Pizza in Barry and attempted to steal cash. The robber was armed with a handgun. The suspect began to assault one of the employees when two additional employees bravely jumped in to assist. At this time, I'd like to call forward Trevor Kosla and Andrew Malin. Both of these individuals are being awarded the Barry Police Department Civilian Certificate of Commendation, which reads, to, awarded to Trevor Kosla, while working at his place of employment on January 30th, 2018, Mr. Kosla observed an armed assailant enter the business in an attempt to complete a robbery. The suspect was brandishing a handgun. The suspect directed the weapon at and assaulted one of the other employees present. 
During the assault, Mr. Kosla heroically stepped in to assist, placing his own life in danger. Mr. Kosla and a fellow employee, Mr. Malin, were able to wrestle the intruder to the ground and restrain him until police arrived and placed the suspect into custody. Mr. Kosla's actions prevented further injuries, assisted in the apprehension of the suspect, and prevented the loss of merchandise and money from the business. Andrew Malin is being awarded the same civilian certificate of commendation. Again, while working at his place of employment on January 30th, 2018, Mr. Malin observed an armed assailant enter the business in an attempt to complete a robbery. The suspect was armed with a handgun. The suspect directed the weapon at and assaulted one of the other employees present. During the assault, Mr. Malin heroically stepped in to assist, placing his own life in danger. Mr. Malin and a fellow employee, Mr. Kosla, were able to wrestle the intruder to the ground and restrain him until police arrived and placed the suspect into custody. Mr. Malin's actions prevented further injuries, assisted in the apprehension of the suspect, and prevented the loss of merchandise and money from the business. Officers place their lives on the line every single day. We have to strap on body armor and gun belts before every shift. Officers perform small acts of heroism every day that we patrol the streets. There are, however, times when officers go above and beyond the call of duty. We will now honor those officers and speak of the extraordinary acts that they perform. Chief Carbone and Sergeant Rikos, please stand. On April 25th, 2017, Mother Nature decided to officially welcome Chief Carbone to Barry. Chief Carbone and Sergeant Rikos passed the test thrown at them, though they both had to undergo some rather unpleasant rabies treatments. Gentlemen, please post. Chief Carbone is being awarded the Barry Police Department Certificate of Commendation for outstanding performance of his duties while protecting civilians and property from danger. On April 25, 2017, Chief Carbone and Sergeant Rikos were dispatched to a residence for the report of a bobcat attacking two large domestic dogs. The homeowner reported that she had last observed her dogs being viciously attacked in their, the front yard and believed that the bobcat was under the front deck. Sergeant Rikos directed the homeowner to remain inside while he and the chief, while he and Chief Carbone searched the yard. The bobcat emerged from under the deck and first approached Sergeant Rikos before turning and charging towards Chief Carbone. Both officers fired at the animal. When the bobcat was approximately eight to ten feet from Chief Carbone, it leapt into the air towards him with its front legs splayed open and its mouth agape. Chief Carbone fired an additional three to four rounds, striking the animal. The animal fell, injured to the ground. The bobcat continued to attempting to attack the officers and was dispatched by both. The Bobcat subsequently tested positive for rabies and both officers were treated for exposure. Chief Carbone's actions and dedication to duty reflect great credit upon himself and were keeping with the highest traditions of the Barry Police Department. Sergeant Rikos is also being awarded the Certificate of Commendation for outstanding performance of his duties while protecting civilians and property from danger. On April 25, 2017, Sergeant Rikos and Chief John Carbone were dispatched, dispatched to a residence for the report of a bobcat attacking two large domestic dogs. The homeowner reported that she had observed her dogs being viciously attacked in their front yard by the bobcat, believed that the bobcat was under the front deck. Sergeant Rikos directed the homeowner to remain inside while he and Chief Carbone searched the yard. 
The Bobcat emerged from under the deck and first approached Sergeant Rikos before turning and charging towards Chief Carbone. Both officers fired on the animal, disabling it. The Bobcat subsequently tested positive for rabies. Both officers were treated for exposure. Sergeant Rikos's actions and dedication to duty reflect great credit upon himself and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Barrie Police Department. Officer Ryle, please stand. On August 9th, 2017, Officer Ryle was advised of a reported scam. An elderly female resident of Barry had been scammed out of $6,000. We get hundreds of similar calls over the course of a year. Most reported scams are difficult, if not impossible, to track down. Officer Ryle persevered and was able to crack the case. Officer Ryle, post. Officer Ryle is being awarded the Barry Police Department Certificate of Commendation for outstanding performance of his duties while investigating a crime against the elderly. On August 9, 2017, Officer Ryle received a complaint from an elderly woman who had fallen victim to a scam and who had last lost $6,000. The victim ex explained that she had received a telephone call from an individual who claimed that the victim's grandson was in trouble and needed money sent via wire to a random bank account. Generally, cases such as this are difficult, if not impossible to solve. Through painstaking attention to detail and dogged determination, Officer Ryle located the bank in Bakersfield, California, contact, connected the perpetrator to the crime, and identified the scam as part of a larger criminal enterprise. The suspect was arrested as part of a multi-agency sweep and held accountable for the crime executed against an elderly citizen of Barry. Officer Ryle's actions and dedication to duty reflect great credit upon himself and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Barry Police Department. Sergeant Rikos, Officer Davidson, Officer Ryle, and Officer Matarosian, please stand. On December 7, 2017, these officers were working traffic details in town. An astute observation by Sergeant Rikos led to a brave motor vehicle stop on foot, a fleeing felon, another brave motor vehicle stop in a POV, personally owned vehicle, and the apprehension of a fugitive from justice. Sergeant Rikos, please post. Sergeant William Rikos is being awarded the Barry Police Department Meritorious Achievement Medal for outstanding performance of his duties while apprehending a fugitive. On December 7, 2017, Sergeant Rikos was working a traffic detail with Officer Zachary Matarosian. Sergeant Rikos recognized a passing motorist as a wanted person. 
When the vehicle approached the detail a second time, Sergeant Rikos, exposing himself to great personal risk, affected a motor vehicle stop on foot. The suspect then drove away from the scene, dragging Sergeant Rikos a short distance. Sergeant Rikos coordinated the dissemination of information and search via radio until the suspect was located, stopped, and taken into custody. In addition to multiple Massachusetts warrants, the suspect was found to have extraditable warrants out of Texas and had been a fugitive for approximately three years. Sergeant Rikos' actions and dedication to duty reflect great credit upon himself and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Barry Police Department. Officer Ryle is also being awarded the Barry Police Department Meritorious Achievement Medal. Four, outstanding performance of his duties while apprehending a fugitive. On December 7, 2017, Officer Ryle was working a traffic detail with Officer Russell Davidson when they heard a radio transmission from Sergeant William Rikos advising units that a wanted suspect had fled a motor vehicle stop, subsequently dragging Sergeant Rikos a short distance. Officers Ryle and Davidson immediately began a search of the area. Officer Ryle, through alertness and quick thinking, located and stopped the suspect vehicle. Officer Ryle approached the suspect alone and at gunpoint removed the suspect from the offending vehicle. In addition to multiple Massachusetts warrants, the suspect was found to have extraditable warrants out of Texas and had been a fugitive for approximately three years. Officer Ryle's actions and dedication to duty reflect great credit upon himself and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Barry Police Department. Davidson, Post. Officer Davidson is receiving the Barry Police Department Certificate of Commendation for outstanding performance of his duties while apprehending a fugitive. On December 7, 2017, Officer Davidson was working a traffic detail with Officer Matthew Ryle when they heard a radio transmission from Sergeant William Rikos advising units that a wanted person had fled a motor vehicle stop, subsequently dragging Sergeant Rikos for a distance. Officers Davidson and Ryle immediately began a search of the area and located the suspect. They removed the suspect from the vehicle and took him into custody. In addition to multiple Massachusetts warrants, the suspect was found to have extraditable warrants out of Texas and had been a fugitive for approximately three years. Officer Davidson's actions and dedication to duty reflect great credit upon himself and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Barry Police Department. Officer Monterosian, post. Mm -hmm. 
Officer Matarosian is also being awarded the Barry Police Department Certificate of Commendation for outstanding performance of his duties while apprehending a fugitive. On December 7th, 2017, Officer Matarosian and Sergeant William Rikos were working in traffic detail when Sergeant Rikos recognized the passing motorist as a wanted person. The vehicle passed the detail a second time, was stopped, and then fled the scene, dragging Sergeant Rikos a short distance. Officer Matarosian immediately reacted to assist with the search for the suspect and subsequent arrest. In addition to, mass, to multiple Massachusetts warrants, the suspect was found to have extraditable warrants out of Texas and had been a fugitive for approximately three years. Officer Matarosian's actions and dedication to duty reflect great credit upon himself and are in keeping with the highest traditions of the Barry Police Department. Officer Davidson, please stand. On April 29, 2018, Officer Davidson was requested to assist the Hubberson Police Department who was looking for a suspect involved in a restraining order violation. This suspect is known to surrounding departments and is a violent and dangerous individual. Officer Davidson remained at a designated post, observed the individual's vehicle, and was instrumental in capturing this dangerous person. Officer Davidson, post. Officer Davidson is being awarded Barry Police Department's Meritorious Achievement Medal for outstanding performance of his duties in the apprehension of an armed fleeing suspect. On April 29, 2018, Officer Davidson responded to assist the Hubberston Police Department in the search for a male who was wanted for a restraining order violation. The subject had a lengthy history of violent criminal behavior. Multiple agencies were involved in the effort. Officer Davidson encountered the subject's vehicle as it passed his static post and effected a motor vehicle stop. The subject then fled from Officer Davidson and a motor vehicle pursuit ensued that ended with the crash of the subject's vehicle. The subject, armed with a large combat knife, fled on foot into a wooded area. Officer Davidson led the foot pursuit, engaged the suspect at gunpoint, and along with other officers, took the suspect into custody. Officer Davidson's actions and dedication to duty reflect great credit upon himself and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Barry Police Department. Ladies and gentlemen, if we could have another round of applause for our office. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to call up State Representative Donald Burkett. promise this is the last time you have to walk out. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, we have a lot of family and friends here. I see. Thank you, Dr. Marshall and Principal Devine, for holding this venue. We appreciate it greatly. Um, thank you to everyone here, especially um, Trevor and Andrew. Good for you guys. All right, congrats. You did a lot of stuff. You did something not a lot of people would do. Congratulations. To you.
Chief, congratulations to you on your department. I don't think I've seen any other department march like this. Up in, so good job, Chief. I, I get in trouble all the time because I comment how young everybody looks, and my wife reminds me that they're not really that young that I'm just getting that old. So. Um, but no, congratulations to you. Congratulations to what you guys do. I know sometimes it doesn't seem like it's the greatest time to be a police officer right now, but trust me, by the vast majority, you are appreciated for what you do. So I just want to say on behalf of the House and Tyler, who's here from Senator Angobi's office, congratulations and thank you. Chairman of the board, Matt Urban. I've, uh, for many of you that may or may not know me, um, started the select board in 2015. Um, I am now chairman of the board. Thankfully, Charlie was the one to give me the opportunity. Uh, since I've been on, there's been a lot of change in the town, whether a new town administrator, new police chief. Um, I've been privileged to be involved with that. And I can only say that I'm extremely proud of how the police chief has come in. I'm also proud of how the town has worked with making sure we can fund the needs of the department. We've had to increase certain costs to help with uh, uniform costs, equipment, and training. And uh, I'm extremely proud, not only of the town providing the funding, but all of the officers that have accepted the opportunity and taken advantage of the training they've been given. It only improves the quality of the department we have and how well they serve us. Um, one of the things that I found most interesting being a selectman is very often you come up, someone sees you, you have a quick little back and forth, and then they say, you got a thankless job. And I can understand why people might think that. Selectmans receive a lot of complaints about either what they're doing, what someone else in town government's doing, members of various departments, or even if there's complaints about the police department or the fire department. And when it's all of this comes my way, and I may or may not be able to do anything about it. But then I think about it, and I realize, more often than not, these guys don't get the things they deserve. And they're the ones that at times may feel like it's a thankless job, because they pretty much have to come in and make sure everybody knows when they're doing something wrong. And most humans don't like to hear that they did something wrong, let alone then have to pay for the consequences. And we pretty much put them in the front line and say, you did something wrong and here's the consequence. And that's an extremely difficult spot to be in. And I just want to say thank you for the professionalism in which you guys do that. Um, sometimes I, I think a police officer kind of mimics how I interpret the town's model of tranquil and alert. Their job is to make sure that they're open, they can be approached, if you have issues you can go to them, explain your concerns, but at the same rate, if they don't know individuals, they've got to be just as alert in case the kind presentation is hiding something behind. So they're walking a two-edged sword the whole time of, I want to make sure that we can get along, we can get together, we can communicate, we can do well. But I also need to make sure that you're being truthful with what you're saying, you're presenting the right information, and they can't just act on something because somebody says it. So it's a difficult line that they're in because sometimes you can be gray, you can be subjective, but we ask them to do it anyway, and that's how they got to protect us. So I think it's very important to recognize the difficult positions that we as a society put our officers in when we ask them to protect us and serve us. I just wanted to make sure that all of the members here understand the appreciation that not only I, but the Board of Selectmen, as well as anybody I've ever talked to in the town, have for the efforts you guys put forward for the town. 
Thank you very much. At this time, uh, Chief Carbone has some close, closing remarks. This is the part where I say I'm going to keep it brief and then my wife laughs because she knows I can't. <laughs> this is our first annual award ceremony. This is something that we're doing um, during Police Week and I want everybody to understand what Police Week is if this is something that you haven't read about. Uh, basically there's a, uh, there's a story that goes with Police Week. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy signed a proclamation which designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day, and the week in which the date falls as Police Week. Currently, tens of thousands of law enforcement officers from around the world converge on Washington, D.C. to participate in a number of planned events which honor those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. National Police Week draws in between 25,000 and 40,000 attendees. <clears throat> the attendees come from departments throughout the United States, as well as from agencies throughout the world. It so happens that Sergeant Ricos attended this year and can attest to the vastness of the events. Throughout the national, the, the, uh, throughout the nation, departments recognize Police Week by gathering individually to honor the service of their own officers. In keeping with the tradition, we have placed our ceremony during Police Week. Um, I would like to take a moment to thank our distinguished guests and, uh, and everybody in the audience for coming out. And I'd like to make special mention uh, Chief Ayotte from the Hardwick New Braintree Police Department Chief, and uh, Chief Monaco from the Rutland Police Department, and I'm sorry, if we could just announce <laughs> that. We are fortunate to share a, uh, a, an excellent relationship with our area departments. If, if we need them, uh, they don't just come running, I mean, they come running. And we like to think that we do the same, and you saw that reflected in, in Officer Davidson's award. So we work together, uh, small departments have to, and I very much appreciate your being here to help us honor these officers. Um, I do wanna, as I was listening to the awards, um, you know, I, I couldn't help but smile. Some, you know, I've been, I've been in the background as these officers perform these feats, and it makes me proud. Um, I've been in law enforcement for 27 years, which means I started at the age of 15. The, I've seen it all, right, until tomorrow, and then I'll see something new. Well, I have seen, I've seen very, very good officers performing their duties above and beyond. This group of officers are exceptional. In my 27 years, they stand at the top with all of the best officers I've served with. And that's unusual. It's unusual to have a department that consists of officers that I sincerely mean are just that good. Um, and, and I laugh because they have a sense of humor, they bond, uh, they're bonded, they act as a team. And I'm gonna give you the backstory to one of the awards just to give you an example. Um, we have a very professional relationship, but also a very personal relationship. One day, I saw Sergeant Rinkos getting ready to go out for a detail. So, I'm trying to get across the message to them that when they're on details, they're in full uniform, and if they see a crime, act. You know, the, the, um, the perpetrator doesn't get a free pass because they're directing traffic. If they see it, then they're gonna take some sort of action. But rather than say it in those words, I just said, you know, when I used to go out on details, I'd arrest somebody if I saw a crime you, you think you guys can pull that off? And, you know, they smiled and said, yeah, that's great, Chief, thanks. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do what we can. And, I mean, no sooner that they get out there, and suddenly I hear over the air, Sergeant Rico's calling in, yeah, listen, can you do a records check, a warrant check? Oh, turns out the guy's got a warrant. Well, that wasn't good enough. He lets everybody know, and, you know, okay, they're past Barry now, they're somewhere else, we'll be waiting for Rutland to grab them, or, or Harvard to grab them. No, no, that wasn't good enough for Sergeant Rikos. The, uh, I don't know, half hour later, car's coming back at me, I'm gonna stop it, and then all heck broke loose. And you heard what they did, they acted as a team, they all acted together, 
I didn't even bother to get on the air to try and, and say anything. I just started heading in their direction. By the time I got there, this event that I thought was going to take all day and require multi-agency intervention was over. The person was handcuffed. He was in custody, and they were mopping up. And, you know, naturally, I, I couldn't just say congratulations. I really I walked over to Sergeant Rinkus and said, well, that's one, but I'd usually get two. <laughs> And then I crossed my fingers up, please don't let this happen again. <laughs> Not today, tomorrow. We can have it happen tomorrow. So that's, that's this department. This is how they react. They're always up to the task. They go about their jobs professionally. They get the job done. They have each other's back. They're safe. They're efficient. Uh, a statistic came out very recently that said that um, officers use force 0.086% of the time. 0.086. You've listened to a lot of stories tonight. And they've never they, and, and not one of those did they lay their hands. I think there was a taser incident. Not one of those did they lay their hands on someone. And, these, and, and not that they don't have to sometimes, but they are professional in every sense of the word. So, as chief, I get credit for their work a lot. I'm happy to take it. But uh, this is the night to give credit where credit is due. So, one more time, please. Chaplain Stitson again to give us a closing prayer. After what I've witnessed here, seeing and heard tonight, I'm truly honored to have been present here. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the many successes of this past year. Please continue your blessings upon this department. We ask for your protection upon all who have chosen this profession to serve this community and to protect all throughout the coming year. May I leave you all with a favorite prayer of mine. Lord, may everything I do begin with your inspiration. Continue with your help and reach perfection under your guidance. Amen. Thank you again, Chuck. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here with us as we honor our police officers. Thank you very much.